Well, before we start this video, guys, I just want to say a huge thanks to Alan Jones for suggesting this topic in today's video. Uh, really big thanks to you, mate. This one's for you. And um, keep the suggestions coming, guys. Obviously, uh, I will be announcing the results of the recent poll in which I asked you guys, obviously, what do you want to see more of on the channel? So I'll be announcing those results shortly. But Alan, this one's for you. I hope you enjoy it. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Wild Your Garden. And firstly, thanks to you all for the support on me releasing my first shorts on the channel. Now, one or two of you I know are probably a little bit disgruntled that I'm not giving enough information on the shorts, but I thought it's just a bit of bonus information for you guys, just small snippets. And obviously all the recent videos, which it was very... Um, well highlighted to me uh, and i'm very grateful for the feedback obviously the whole point of me having this channel is to help you guys make habitats and one of the feedbacks that i did get from uh, the recent video my short on the elm tree which was wonderful to find the white letter hair streak egg on that um, is that the video wasn't long enough and it didn't do the elm tree justification i couldn't agree more i absolutely believe in doing justice to all the native flora and fauna as I'm sure is evidence on the channel in the 140 odd videos I've done before this one. Um, so please bear with me guys. Obviously all the shorts that I'm doing are, you know, like I say, they are snippets of inf information, but they are designed to be um, followed up if if not already backed up by videos covering whichever plant or animal I am featuring um, in the short in a what somebody quite uh, aptly termed in one of my longs <laughs> which uh, I thought was quite a good name for so I'm actually uh, you know really pleased to hear that feedback and it's great because it's a new venture for me as well these shorts you know I've, I've got a TikTok channel but I don't really do a lot on it I ought to do more but you know I find YouTube is is, is very very rewarding and hopefully, like I say, the shorts will either meet a new demographic of people to inspire them to help wildlife in their own gardens, or it'll just give you bite-sized bits of information um, on your daily routine as in, or on top of the extra videos that I'll be doing, of course, on the channel. So don't panic. I'm not switching to shorts. I'm just going to be adding them in as supplementary uh, videos in between me, obviously editing and producing all the bigger videos, which obviously take a lot of time and effort in evenings and weekends for me to do to keep keep you guys happy. That's what this channel is all about, is keeping you guys happy and entertained and providing more habitats for wildlife first and foremost. So thank you for bearing with me on the shorts and please give me feedback. You know, let me know if you think I ought to tweak things. You know, this channel is for you guys. After all, you're the ones that are making it where it's going to. So uh, a big thank you to, to you all. Anyway, in today's video, I want to talk to you about my top five tips that you can be doing right now to get your garden uh, wildlife friendly for the spring or the best five tips uh, to attract more wildlife and help wildlife in spring. Now, point number one, I would say is plant for pollinators. Now, I think this is crucial because I've seen bees in January and even in December, which some of you have been reporting. So planting for pollinators is essential. Obviously, when they wake up out of hibernation, they are exhausted. They need to top up their their fuel shall we say so they need lots of pollen to go to so great things to be planting are things such as a snowdrop crocuses um aconites wood anemones all those sorts of bulbs which i've already featured and uh, do check out my previous video on the best five bulbs to be planting in your garden for wildlife in my honest opinion they might not be the best but that's my uh, uh, honest opinion so things like that things like primroses as well you know cowslips um I will be doing another video on the best five spring plants to plant in your garden for a little bit later on, kind of April, May time. Um, so stick around for that one. But obviously providing nectar and pollen for these insects as soon as they emerge is absolutely crucial. So that's point one. Point two, get some nest boxes up for birds. It's not quite too late, although it's, well, the 1st of March today, birds will be nesting by the end of the month and into early April. So they'll be certainly uh, defining the territories right now, as I've said on my recent short, um, and they will be still looking for territories as well. So those birds that have kind of got elbowed out of one area might still be looking for a habitat in your garden. And as you can see behind me, I'm in a bit of a planted woodland, 
but there aren't many natural nest holes left. I mean, obviously, standing deadwood is something that seems to be, you know, taken down and dealt with as soon as it crops up in forestry situations, a bit like this one, unfortunately. And unless it is ancient woodland with very old trees with natural cavities, it's very hard um, for, for these, in, these birds, in particular blue tits, great tits, um, to find nesting holes. Um, and, you know, generally speaking, and things like willow tits, marsh tits as well, I know, you know, we're not likely to get those in our gardens. They are um, very secretive birds and, and quite rare nowadays. But uh, they are obviously uh, in vital need of these habitats. So get some boxes up in your garden. And if you want to know how to make your own bird box, then check out the previous um, boxes I've done on the video on how to make a robin box, blue tit, great tit. I'll put a link to one of those at the end of this video. Uh, so that's number two, get some boxes up. They do, or they are still looking for habitats and particularly um, house sparrow, starling, which are now red listed of course. And um, you know, tawny owl as well, like barn owl, anything like that. If you've got an open piece of ground, get some boxes up. I will be covering more on birds and how you can help specific ones in your own garden so that's point number two point number three is make some access for hedgehogs now very soon hedgehogs are going to start waking up and they're going to be coming into your gardens and um, obviously they need to access many many gardens in a night to find enough food to to eat and to basically survive so the more access they have to these gardens the better it is so make some holes in your fences if you've got hedges top work then uh, you don't have to worry about them getting underneath but a five inch by five inch hole or 12 and a half by 12 and a half centimeters and check out the how to make a hedgehog highway video on the channel if you haven't seen that already if you're looking to do one of these hedgehog highways um, because that will show you everything you need to know about how to make a hole in the fence sounds obvious but there's right and wrong ways just going to swap arms a minute um yes yeah, so make a hole for hedgehogs obviously uh, is point number three so that they can access as soon as they wake up uh, more habitats to uh, go and feed and discover. They can travel up to a mile a night, so they need a fair few gardens to be able to access to um, sustain their habits. So uh, yes, that's number three. Number four is um, it's not too late, just about to get some more bare root trees and shrubs in your garden. So um, obviously things such as, you know, hedging, individual standalone trees, um, fruit trees as well, obviously really good for, for nectar and pollen in the spring when they flower. And of course the apples and everything else in the autumn for our visiting thrush species, red wing, red wing field fair. But bare root, you can still plant up until the end of March. So um, do get some bare roots in your garden if you can. Of course, check out the wildergarden.com shop if you're looking to buy some specimens. We have still got those available until the end of April while stocks last. So uh, do check that out, guys. So that's point number four. Point number five is don't get too eager on cutting all your herbaceous perennials back. Now, it's one question that I get asked a hell of a lot is when to cut back your herbaceous perennials. Um, and even your meadow, it can apply to a meadow, although this is more for a herbaceous perennial border. So if you've got lots of plants through your borders, salvias, echinaceas, verbenas, all the stuff that I rave on about, nepeta, that sort of stuff, then just leave it a little bit longer. I know you've got itchy fingers, you wanna get those secateurs going, you wanna cut everything back because you can see the vigor of these plants just about to kick off at the base. And a lot of them will have obviously spent the winter months forming a nice basil rosette of fresh green leaves. And you've got these kind of bedraggled dead stems from last year's growth poking out the top. Don't cut it back yet because they'll still be full of, um, you know, overwintering larvae, ladybirds and all sorts. You know, the hollow tubes are a really good habitat for wildlife. So, um, and of course, things like uh, our teasels and that in our borders, goldfinches will no doubt still be getting the last dregs of the natural seed sources available um, in those flower heads. So please, if you can, refrain from cutting back. Of course, even though we're in, in March now, um, we can still get some colder snaps. I think the temperature is supposed to drop again next week. So, you know, it's still uh, a little bit early to be cutting back. Generally speaking, my herbaceous stuff I cut back, um, you know, sort of April time, early April, once I know everything's, it's getting a bit warmer, apart from last year when it was flipping freezing through April, uh, but everything's getting a little bit warmer. So, uh, you know, just leave it another month if you can. I know it might not be the uh, nicest of things to look at but uh, uh, we've got to get out of this mindset of being too tidy and cutting things back in oh, October in, in most gardens um, which um, don't worry I'm uh, I'm going to go on a, on a brutal attack of 
of the RHS and their recommended sort of pruning times for, for borders at some point. I'm not having a dig by any means. It's just the traditions. We like to get our gardens neat and tidy for winter, but it has to stop. We have to make a change. We have to allow wildlife to survive through the winter months. I mean, only at the weekend, I was actually, um, you know, some leaves are gathered in the corner of the porch, actually. And so much so that I was kind of dragging a few in as I was coming out of the door. And I just went to move a few away to move them down to the bottom of the garden and I actually found a little tiny bright green caterpillar of an angle shades moth caterpillar um, which was just just curled up in a ball obviously right in the depth of those leaves so log piles leaves they're still full of life at this time of year don't touch them yet please anyway enough begging and pleading of you guys you all do enough for wildlife so uh, I'm truly grateful um, so yes, please stick with those five tips if you can to help wildlife. So a bit of a recap. Number one, um, trying to remember the order now. Uh, <laughs> uh, put up some bird boxes. It's still not too late. Uh, planting your bare roots, which I think was number three. <laughs> Get them in the garden. Uh, pollinators, help them out by planting some pollinator friendly plants. Hedgehog holes, number four, and then not cutting everything back too early, number five. Um, not in that order, I know, I can't remember which order I said it now, but uh, if you follow those five tips, you'll be sure to help everything a little bit longer through what is almost the end of winter. Well, we are officially now coming into spring, so uh, yes, if you can hang off a little bit longer, that will be brilliant. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, guys. Really appreciate the support, and um, yep, keep the questions coming at me. I'll do my best along with Nikki, who's almost... Uh, full-time helping me with logistics well she is more than full-time to be honest helping me with logistics of running the company and and uh, helping answer you guys and everything else so um yes keep the questions coming and keep the feedback coming as well obviously what you'd like to see and um, yes I will be very very pleased to bring you more videos on all the ways in which you can help wildlife in videos to come thanks for watching I'll see you soon